Hello. So uh, for this next example, we're going to look at two buildings uh, with one uh, a person standing on the edge of one building who's throwing a ball to the a person throwing, standing at the edge of another building. We're going to assume the height of the people is negligible. Um, the two buildings are are 10 meters apart, we'll call this building one and building two, they're 10 meters apart, and the difference in height between the two buildings is 20 meters. And so we're going to define our coordinate system and write down what we know, and what we don't know. So we know that the vertical displacement, sorry, the horizontal displacement the ball will undergo is 10 meters. And the vertical displacement it only go is 20 meters. We know that the acceleration in the y direction is negative g. No acceleration in the x direction is zero. And we're going to assume that we throw the ball with an initial velocity just so it, come, it hits the, um, the person two at the apex of its trajectory. So we're not going to put any unnecessary effort into it and throw the ball at a, project, at a trajectory like that, okay? So we're gonna throw it, so the apex of the trajectory is right at that person where they can catch it. So that tells us that our final velocity in the y direction will be zero meters per second. Okay, so the unknown is we are looking for what that initial velocity needs to be. So it's magnitude and direction. So once again, in projectile motion, the motion in the horizontal and vertical directions are independent of each other. Uh, and they're only connected through time. So we know that the ball has to travel a horizontal displacement of 10 meters in the same amount of time has to travel a vertical displacement of 20 meters. So what we need to do is we need to find kinematic equations in both the vertical and horizontal directions that relate displacement to time. And we'll be able to use those two equations to find out what the initial velocity needs to be. So uh, the vertical, sorry, the horizontal direction is the easiest. We have one equation because acceleration in the x direction is zero. That, um, the displacement in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction times time. And we can write that initial velocity, velocity in the x direction in terms of the unknown initial velocity. So the x component is going to be the magnitude of the initial velocity times the cosine of theta. Let's so rewrite this as. All right, so now we need to relate displacement and time in the vertical direction. Looking at our kinematic equations, um, <clears throat> the equation that works best that relates um, displacement, vertical displacement to time, and is works best with the known and unknown information is Okay, so this is our one equation. We are actually, first of all, we can solve this equation. We're gonna solve this equation for time. I'll see why we do that in a second. All right, so we have, we have this equation for time in terms of the initial velocity, the magnitude, the angle, and the uh, horizontal displacement. So in the y direction, if we look at y equals one half v initial y plus v final y t. So we don't know v initial y. We, we do know that v initial y is equal to v initial times the sine of theta. We can substitute that in there. But v final y we know is zero at this point. This term is zero. So we can rewrite this as one half v initial sine theta t. Now you have two equations um, that both have the initial, the magnitude and the angle and time. What we can do is we can substitute this equation in here for time. 
and we get All right, and so you see what happens here is this term and this term cancel out. So it eliminates one of the unknowns. So we get our y displacement is equal to one half, our horizontal displacement, and sine of theta divided by cosine theta is tangent of theta. So here we have one unknown, and that's theta, the angle of the initial velocity. And so we can solve for it. So we multiply by two and divide by x. So if I come over here, we get two y over x equals the tangent of theta. And so to solve for theta, we're gonna take the inverse tangent on both sides. So we get the inverse tangent or arc tangent of two times 20, oh, 20 meters divided by 10 meters. And that gives 75.96 degrees. So now we know the angle of the um, initial velocity. We just need to find the magnitude. Um, and so before we do that, I'm going to erase some of this. Uh, let's erase this right here. Maybe if I can select it. Yeah, there we go. Um, I'll do this right here too. Now to find the magnitude, we see what kinematic equation in the x or y direction has um, as the initial in it uh, and all other knowns. Well, there's only one, it's in the y direction. And let me get my, and it's, it's in the vertical direction and it's v final y squared squared equals v initial y squared plus two a y y. All right, we know that the final velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. Now we can plug in v initial y, uh, y as v initial times the sine of theta. Uh, so we get negative v initial squared sine of theta squared equals, so I just brought it over to the side, negative two g y. And that negative sign comes the fact that g is downward and we said upward is positive. So it's a negative downward. So we see that these negative signs cancel out. And so the initial squared equals two g y divided by sine of theta squared. And so V initial is equal to the square root of two times G times Y over the sine of theta squared. This equals two times 9.8 meters per second squared times 20 meters divided by the sine of 75.96 squared. equals 20.41 meters per second. So our initial velocity needs to be 20.41 meters per second directed at 75.96 degrees. Um, so uh, that is our initial velocity needed to throw the ball, a horizontal distance of 10 meters and a vertical distance of 20 meters. One more example, we have a little ramp <clears throat> in which a ball rolls down. And when the ball 
is about to roll off the ramp. It has a velocity of magnitude of 10 meters per second, directed at an angle of 35 degrees above the horizontal. And the edge of the ramp is one meter above the surface. And so the question is, is how far from the edge of the ramp will the uh, ball hit the floor? All right, so let's go ahead and define our coordinate system and our knowns. So we know the initial is 10 meters per second at 35 degrees. Uh, we know the vertical displacement is going to undergo is negative one meter. It's going to go from here. On here, that's its vertical displacement. It's negative one meter. You know, AY is equal to negative G. Um, I think that's all that we know. The unknown is its horizontal displacement. So basically, if we could find the amount of time it's in the air for, we can then use that time to find out how far it travels horizontally. And we're going to use the motion in the vertical direction to determine how time, how long it's in the air for. So there's there's two ways in which we can uh, do this. We could use this equation, y equals the initial y t plus one half a y t squared. Right, and solve this for t. Now, this is a quadratic in t, so we'd need to use the quadratic formula because the initial velocity in the y direction is not zero. So this term is not zero. We could use the quadratic formula, or we can do uh, another step. It's a, uh, use another equation, use multiples. Basically, use two equations. The other route we can go is to use the v final y squared equals v initial y squared plus two a y times y. Use this to solve for the final velocity in the y direction right here. And then use that final y velocity in this, in this equation. So final y velocity equals initial y velocity plus a y t and solve for t. Uh, we can do either or. Uh, I'm going to do the second step because with the uh, Pythagorean theorem, sorry, Pythagorean theorem, quadratic formula, uh, there's two potential answers. You're going to check both of them to see which one's the right one because one would give you a positive time, one give you a negative time. Where if we do this one, we're just going to get uh, one answer. But I'm going to leave this up so we can see how doing this approach will give us the answer in uh, answer is the actual quadratic formula solution for this equation here. So uh, let's solve this equation here for for vy. Okay, so we get vy equals the square root of v initial y squared. Now I'm going to write in uh, the signs for a y and y. They're both negative, so they cancel out their positive. So I get plus two g y. So that is v of y final. Now I'm going to substitute this um, into this equation. So, so for v y final, I get the square root of v initial y squared plus two g y equals v initial y. Now this is plus a y, so it's minus g t. All right, so now I just solve for t. I subtract this term over, so I get negative 
v initial y plus the square root of v initial y squared plus 2gy. Then I divide by negative g equals t. Now, if this answer, so this is the quadratic formula. Uh, so if this is, this, this would be c, oh, this would be c, this is a, and that's b uh, in the quadratic formula. So just, just to re refresh, if you have quadratic formula, ax plus bx plus c equals zero, the solution is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac divided by two a. So in this case, um, b is v initial y, a is negative one half g, and c is negative y, because you gotta subtract that over to the other side. And so if we go negative b, well, that's negative v initial y. In this case, we already have the plus. So it says plus or minus, well, we see here the right answer is plus square root of b squared minus 4ac. So a is negative one half, g, c is negative y, it's plus four ac. So that gives us a positive, uh, the four times one half gives us two, so we get positive two gy divided by two a, and so two times a is two times negative one half g, so you just get negative g. So you can see about solving these two equations, using these two equations to solve for time, these two equations here, it's the same as solving that equation using the quadratic formula. So here's our expression for time. Now we have time, we just have to plug, use it in the horizontal direction to find how far it travels in the horizontal direction. So I'm gonna erase. Some stuff here. Just take some time to clear all this. All right, and so we know this is time in the horizontal direction. X is equal to V initial X T. And so X is equal to, well, V initial X. What is that in terms of V initial and theta? That's V initial cosine theta times time. Time is negative V initial Y. Negative V initial Y is V initial times the sine theta. plus the square root of initial y squared, so it's v initial squared sine of theta squared plus two g y divided by negative g. Now if you're wondering, all I did here for v initial x is I put in v initial cosine theta, right? Because this is v initial, which is broken to its components. V initial X is V initial cosine theta. And here, this is V initial Y. Oh, uh, no, sorry, that's, this is V initial Y. It's V initial times the sine theta. And this V initial sine theta is this V initial Y. Now we just plug in our values and we, we solve. So I can plug in these values here and get real messy writing on this pen. So I'll, I'll plug them in and I'll solve and report the answer. 
as uh, 1.26 meters. So those are a couple examples of uh, problems, uh, solving some problems of projectile motion. Notice that the key is to treat motion in the Y, the, hor the vertical and the horizontal direction independently, uh, and they're just linked through time. And we just, uh, you know, use what knowns and unknowns we have to analyze the motion in each direction and, and find that, that link in time of how we can link those two motions together.